episode of the Coaster 101 podcast. My name is Andrew Stilwell, and for the first time in what feels like months, probably because it actually is, I am joined by some fellow members of the Coaster 101 team on this podcast, and we're going to talk about roller coasters, and you don't have to listen to me drone on and on, and then listen to some interviews, which we hope were fun episodes for you. But Without further ado, I'm going to bring in John Stevenson and Kyle Lindner. Uh, we are going to talk some new roller coasters. John, Kyle, guys, welcome back to the Coaster 101 podcast. It feels so good. It's just like old times. Just like old times. It feels like it's been, yeah, it feels like it's been ages. Thank you for letting us back on. <laughs> well, it's. I don't think it's necessarily letting you back on as much as it is, um, Again, as I kind of touched on last week, I'm in the middle of a move. We're all adults here. We all have uh, other things going on in our lives that, um, you know, podcasts don't necessarily come to the forefront 100% of the time. And But we're going to make more of an effort going forward. So I do appreciate you guys coming on this auditory journey of uh, two new for 2023 Rocky Mountain construction coasters. Um Obviously, last week on the podcast, I touched on Dark Coaster. Before that, we had Nick on with the TPEG alumni contest winners, so two really good episodes there. And before we went on a hiatus, uh, we talked about Aeronautical Landing at Carowinds, which is a fantastic new land there. But again, this is the Coaster 101 podcast. We're here to talk about roller coasters. And so we're going to start with a... uh, an RMC coaster that opened down at Fun Spot Atlanta earlier this year. Uh, John, you were there on Media Day, and Kyle, you had the opportunity to ride um, a little later on, not on Media Day, but we're going to talk Airy Force One. And Kyle, I'll go ahead and bring you in. I know you weren't there the first day, but you know you were somebody who'd visited Fun Spot Atlanta in the past, and we were talking a little bit before we started recording that was like, um we're here they've got this you know this hurricane or what it's called hurricane in orlando but it's the high miler um it looks kind of like a carnival coaster they had think had one other credit there um but you guys went there when you were at six flags and you were like never again and two weeks later or whatever it was they announced an rmc so you're like okay we have to go back so kyle my question to you is somebody as someone who's been there before and john i know you were there as well so i'll bring you in too but um what do you think this uh outside of the obvious what do you think airy force one brings to fun spot atlanta kyle i mean the first thing you notice is the sheer size of it going down the highway that goes towards fun spot i know beforehand when we were there a couple years ago you kind of didn't know you were there until you turned in the parking lot and this thing just towers over the highway and it's the stark white and blue and red track really stand out. Um, I think also it just, it obviously completely transforms the park from just this kind of permanent carnival into a destination when you're in Atlanta. And I really think just from walking around the park of the little bit I was there, it, is allowing the owners to kind of take more ownership of that park and clean it up, add some, you know, touches here and there that it really doesn't feel like that, uh, like a fair feel anymore. It's not like a permanent carnival. It's, it feel like they're actually trying to turn it into a small park. Right. And John, what do you, what do you think? Kind of the same question to you. Yeah, it it is definitely a transformative, addition for this park. I mean, I think it also is hopefully will inspire or at least alert other parks to the possibility like, Hey, we, you know, this is something that um, we can have an attraction built from the ground up like this. You know, we don't necessarily need um, an old dilapidated wooden coaster to have an RMC, um, an RMC like this. And you can see that the park is really taking a lot of pride in it. They've done a really great job with the area surrounding it. Um, it. There are a lot of great viewpoints of the coaster from um, from the midway or what the former parking lot. Um, so it's it's all around. The presentation is great. The theme is great. There's some theming in the queue. I mean, the park has really um, takes pride in this, and 
uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a can't miss if, if you're in Atlanta. So I've got to ask about that theming. Obviously we can say what we want about the, uh, the coaster's name. It is named after the Airy family who are the owners of the fun spot, uh, both Orlando Kissimmee as well as, um, as of 2017, I believe the Atlanta park that which used to be what fun junction USA, something like that. Yeah. Um, Fun Junction USA 2012 to 2018. Um, so what is what the theming you're talking about here? I know they have like an astronaut at Media Day that talks about flight. Air Force One kind of has like a presidential plane feel to it. What is the theming actually like? Yeah, so the theming is definitely kind of um, um, aeronautical space flight. Um a little bit of cosmic um, in the, in the station. So it's definitely the spaceship vibe. And um, I love the, the trains actually the front um, has uh, the back of the front of the, the, the lead car zero car has a control panel on it that, um, you know, not a hundred percent sure if it's an airplane or a spaceship, but definitely has that flight um, aesthetic going. The station of course is kind of a hangar themed, so overall, I mean, the, the theming in the queue, the a good chunk of the queue is under the station or under the um, station platform. And you've got some, honestly, it's, it's a little bit like um, what you might see at a Disney or Hershen Park, where you've got kind of the workstation and some blueprints and hard hats and um, some newspaper clippings from um man walking on the moon. So it's, I was really surprised when I first walked through there when I was in line to ride and was just really impressed with how, um, how for a park of this, you know, the size, and it's not one that you would really think to have this, uh, extent of theming to, to have that was really, uh, was, was really a, a, a nice surprise. Yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at pictures right now as I'm talking to you guys, because I've yet to get down to the greater Atlanta area. I think this is in Fayetteville, Georgia. Um, it kind of it has that look of the uh, the vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center down in, in Cape Canaveral, um, you know, complete with the American flag on the left hand side there. So I, I definitely see the, the space vibes and the aeronautic vibes. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to picture this. I've tried to be as spoiler free as possible, which I feel like talking about on a podcast here is defeats the purpose, but Kyle, you know, there's, there's a number of elements on this coaster that they feel unique. They look unique. Do you have a, uh, a favorite moment on Air Force one? Yeah. Um, the zero G stall that's right after you go, you go down the big drop, you go up, you flip and do a turn. And then you go, which is the 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 zero G stalls right under the lift, and it's just it's huge. And I know we rode the one in Chicago at Six Flags Great America, mm-hmm. and this one just it felt so much longer. You're just hanging upside down. What felt, you know, like ten seconds, but no, it wasn't. Okay, and and then uh, John, same question to you. Um, it would have to be, I, this is, this is a tough question because this really is a coaster with back-to-back elements. So I love the, um, the first zero G stall. I love the, um, that outward banked, uh, turn that is in between the, let's see the, um, the first zero G stall and, um, kind of the, I believe that's the double up that follows it. Yeah. Those would probably be my two. I'll also love the zero G roll over the um, over the arcade. That was a really fun moment. One that I wasn't really expecting it to that you to be that close to the roof of the of the arcade. Um, so yeah, it's it's tough to pick just one moment. I mean, the quad down was amazing. This just is a this is a coaster where every element seems intentional and they're placed in such fast succession that um it's one of those rides that when you first get off you're like you know what just happened i definitely have to ride many more times to really fully appreciate so that's why it's it's so difficult to pick just one element but the outward bank uh turn and the air and the roll over the arcade 
Uh, I mean, it was so close, the roll over the arcade, that you could actually feel the heat um, from the metal roof uh, radiating off of it. It was a sunny day, um, and so that's how close you came to it. So that was a, a really fun moment. Right. And, you know, you guys, you both, you've ridden um, other ground-up, RMCs, obviously, RMC, they've got their, you know, kind of their three main roller coaster types at this point. They've got their single rail steel coasters. They've got their upfit wooden coasters, you know, as John said, taking a, I think the word he used was decrepit, which is, feels uh, a little dilap- <laughs> dilapidated, <laughs> dilapidated, <laughs> decrepit. They both start with D. They both feel a little unfair, but we're just going to go with it. Um, but they've also got their ground up construction. And this is obviously Air Force One is one of these that they have kind of built from the ground up. Um, John, I will start with you. You know, how does how does this compare to other you know, kind of ground up RMCs you've written something like a lightning rod or a Goliath at Six Flags Great America. Um, I don't know if you've been on Outlaw Run, but, you know, how yes. does Aerie, Aerie Force One compare to, you know, these other ground up RMCs? Yeah, so um, I did go on Outlaw Run. It was my first RMC and I will never forget that ride. Um, that first I was there for a special event, um, Outlaw Run in the dark or something. We got to ride it at night. And that first kind of wave turn, an outward bank turn in the dark woods of Silver Dollar City. I mean, that that was, I will never forget that moment. I don't think you'll ever forget your first RMC ride. Um, but I believe this is my first, or I believe this is the first um, iBox track that's built from the ground up, all steel. Um, the supports are steel. So in that regard, it's a little difficult to compare it to the other ground up like coasters um, like Outlaw Run, like Lightning Rod, like Goliath at Great America that I've been on. Um, it does have a slightly different feel. I would say it's a little bit more smoother. Obviously, I would say this one is probably most similar. And I'm thinking primarily of the um, of the zero G stall uh, inverted stall would be, let's see, Goliath at Great America. But really it it's very hard to compare to others because obviously you have some similarities between some of the hybrid conversions, but this was one, this is a coaster where RMC essentially had a clean slate and was not having to work with the structure of, of an existing coaster, um, relatively flat ground. I think there is a little bit of, uh, of a hill that it's built on, but for the most part, they had an empty canvas. And so they were able to really go all out and, and, um, build something that was as insane as, as this is. Yeah. Kyle, what do you think? Kind of the same feel? Uh, is it, have you found it hard to compare to other RMCs that you've ridden? Uh, yeah, I do agree with John. Um, Outlaw Run was also my first RMC. I think, Air Force was my sixth iBox RFC, and I think I've been to like 10 of them now. But um, yeah, I think it's it's kind of in its own class. I, I have it kind of ranked at like five or six out of all the ones I've been on. And uh, it's just, I think that you have the, the RMCs that kind of are the out and backs traditional style. You have some that are the twister style, like Steel Vengeance and um, Twisted Cyclone and this one kind of sits off by itself. It's, it's an awesome ride. It has, it's an all out sprint from start to finish. It, it's super intense. Unlike some of the other ones where you could, you know, ride it over and over again. This one, I know I rode in the front and then that was really smooth and enjoyable. I rode in the back and it was just crazy, like ejector air, and uh, I had to take a moment after that one, but and my my thighs needed it. But it's a uh, yeah, it's really really good ride. Okay, and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna date this recording a little bit because we put on Twitter uh, today. You know I think John said you know define your taste in coasters by quoting this with your top five. And I, do you guys? It, Air Force One was popping up. It co- popped up a couple of times in responses to that tweet. Do you think it's recency bias for a lot of people or is this coaster just that good? And Kyle, I'll start with you. I think it definitely can find itself in the top five for a lot of people. 
depending on your tastes and stuff. Um, it has airtime. It's smooth. It's got ejector air. It's got floater air. It, I mean, it's everything you want in a coaster. I think I was wanting to be a little longer. It felt a little short to me, and that's it's not a top five overall for me, but it's definitely top twenty. Yeah, and I mean, it, this is we are talking about a roller coaster that it is at a smaller, primarily formerly family entertainment center. Um, I mean, it's a, we can call it a small amusement park now because they've got three yeah. coaster credits. Um, but it's, you know, 3,400 feet long, 155 feet tall, top speed of 64 miles an hour. I mean, this is, it's an impressive coaster to be where it is, I think for sure. Um, John, what about you? Do you think those, those top five rankings are warranted? I, I, yeah, it's hard to know, you know, it's hard to know without knowing what, you know, what other RMCs a person has been on. I definitely think this is, it's not something that I would ever scoff at someone having it in their top five. I can definitely see that, especially if you're someone who does really like that ejector air. Um, if you're like, you know, so you're someone who really likes that fast pace. Um, I was actually, I just looked, I was actually surprised to see the length was only 3,400 feet. To me, it seems a little bit longer than I was anticipating. Um, so I think, I, yeah, is it my favorite RMC? Probably not, but do I? No, I, I feel like my favorite RMC can change based on the day and they're always kind of out RMCing themselves. And so it's hard to, unless I was able to go and ride all of them in the same day, um, I, you know, it might be hard to, at this point, it's getting more and more challenging to compare. But I, I yeah, I, I definitely can see how this coaster would land in someone's top five. And John, you say it's going to change by the day, but we all know the answer is lightning rod. So we'll, <laughs> You you can you can lie to the people all that you want to, but we know the answer is lightning well, rod. And yeah, now that I've officially yeah. ridden it, I've I think I was the last enthusiast to ride Velocicoaster, and then after that, I rode lightning rod a, a couple months later. Um, I can agree with you, lightning rod's really good. Um, but it is as someone who has a love hate relationship with how RMC's restraints fit me, and if I can fit in any given train in any given day, I mean. It's it is good. I am looking forward to getting down to Atlanta at some point, hopefully soon, and riding it. I know you guys, um, you've both been doing a little bit more traveling than I am. You've both gotten your three hundredth credits recently. So, first of all, kudos, congratulations! I'll give you your flowers and your congratulations yeah. while I, you know, scowl at you from the other side of this um, this video recording. But. Um, before we go over to the other new RMC hotness of the year, uh, John, I want to ask you a little bit about the media day at Air Force One, just because it is a it is a smaller, I mean, fun spot in Orlando and Kissimmee. They do they do media events from time to time. I would have to imagine this would have been the first ever media event at Fun Spot Atlanta. What was it like um, covering the event at a small park? And you were there. Was it just you, or was there somebody else from our team there? Yep, yeah, it was just me. Yeah, so this was at the end of April. Um, really wasn't sure what what to expect. I, you know, we we go to a lot of these. Very very grateful for the opportunity to represent Coaster One at Coaster One Hundred One at these. And over the years, you just experience so many different kinds and how they're organized and you know what they, you know who's there, what you know how they're kind of the programming. And I have to say, this one was one of the best. I was blown away. I mean, they um, they really rolled out the red carpet for us. Um, they had a really nice ceremony with um, Fun Spot America leader CEO um, um, John Airy, uh, Doug, yeah, Doug Hurley, the astronaut, the mayor of Fayetteville. I mean, it was just a really nice, some nice fireworks. Um, they had some really great food. We were able to ride it as many times as we wanted. They had the um, the reverse POV. I mean, the really nice uh, gift package. It was just such a nice event. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Got so many rides on the coaster. So they, it, again, going back to what I said earlier, really, you can tell that the park has, has taken a lot of pride in this, in this coaster. Yeah. And uh, shout out to our buddies at Upstop Media, who I think were running those reverse POVs for the park. Yes. So yeah. shout out to uh, Scott and Jack. If you guys happen to be listening to this, uh, keep up the great work. 
But uh, moving from Atlanta up to the sweetest place on earth, uh, we're, you guys also uh, both recently attended the media day along with um, John. What's the guy's name who's writing for our site right now? <laughs> um, that would be Evan Scharf, I believe, is yeah. how you pronounce his last name. So it was John and Kyle and Evan, and Evan's been writing some really great stuff on Coaster101.com. So go check those out for sure. But you guys headed to Hershey, Pennsylvania, and you got uh, to attend the media day for Wildcats Revenge, um, which is one of those dilapidated Great Coasters International you know, amazing ride machines that, uh, you know, RMC, no, I'm kidding. It's, um, it is only the third GCI coaster to kind of undergo the RMC treatment following Roar at Discovery Kingdom and obviously Quasi at Busch Gardens Tampa. Um, and John, I'll start with you this time. Um, what were your thoughts on uh, Wildcats Revenge upon riding it? Oh my gosh. I just like RMC's done it again. That was incredible absolutely incredible non-stop action i mean i feel like the you hear these recurring themes when you're describing an rmc hybrid but just i really wasn't sure what what to expect just knowing that you know uh while the original wildcat was a relatively i wouldn't say run-of-the-mill wooden coaster for for a run-of-the-mill gci i mean i wrote it um, back in 2017 and it was fine it wasn't wasn't dilapidated i would say maybe um i wouldn't even say neglected it just had seen better days and but that said i have not been on any of the other two gci um, converted coasters rmc hybrids so i really wasn't sure what to expect just because when you're looking at the layout you know there's not a whole lot that they can do with it but then for them to go and you know increase the size of the lift hill and do all you know all the things that that they did it was um it it blew my mind it was absolutely incredible coaster um so well paced airtime is insane i mean i had the the my beloved rmc shin bruises um the next day just from how intense that that airtime is so it was uh it's a fantastic coaster John, I feel like you're in some sort of like Fifty Shades of Grey relationship with no. RMC, the way you talk about these things sometimes. <laughs> I um, don't know, maybe. Well, anyway, that's a, that's a Patreon episode for the Patreon we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, what do you think of Wildcats Revenge? Um, I will start out by saying I hadn't really done a lot of research on it. And I not that I thought it was going to be bad, but I wasn't, I didn't have my hopes up and I wasn't, and that's not saying that in a bad way, but um, I finally got on Wildcat before it was RMC last year after uh, Jolly Rancher Media Day. And it was the, the first time I had got on it and going to the park three or four times because it was always broken down. Um, very underwhelmed by regular Wildcat. Um, I think it was a week or two after I rode it that they announced the RMC and uh, I was really excited to get back and ride it. I was hoping we got the invite to media day and to say that like I was blown away would be an understatement. I think there's like, like you said, I've been on over 300 coasters now and there are very few that I would classify as coaster perfection. And this is on that list. What, what is it about it specifically that kind of gives you that illustrious uh, title? I think for me, it's uh, rewritability, the smoothness. It's got fun elements. It has a lot of elements. Uh, I really like a coaster that when you think it's going to be over, it's not, and it just keeps going. And you get that with Wildcats Revenge, um, also like Steel Vengeance, Intimidator 305, um, coasters like that that just leave you not wanting any more. Like you know, that was enough, and I'm happy with uh, waiting in line for two hours for it. Okay, um, so I've got to I've got to talk. You you guys mentioned the length of Air Force One compare. You know, it it felt short to Kyle, felt a little long to John. What if I told you guys that Wildcats Revenge is a hundred feet longer, and that's it, like 110 feet longer? That's it. I wouldn't believe you. Yeah, that's that is uh, it's. 3,510 feet long, literally 
33 yards. That's it. That's like, crazy. A first down in NFL blitz. And that is, uh, <laughs> that's a really dated reference that nobody's going to get, but whatever. Um, John, do you think that uh, this, it kind of, I, we all saw the picture on uh, the coaster one oh one. I believe it was Twitter or Instagram of you in your wildcast revenge hat. Um, do you kind of think the, uh, you agree with Kyle that this could be uh, close to coaster perfection. I know you, you had very, you know, strong things to say about it at the beginning of your introduction here, but is it, is it as good as uh, everybody's saying it is? Yeah. I mean, I absolutely think all of the praise is warranted. Um, It is again, it's maybe for me, not the best RMC hybrid that I've, that I've ridden. Um, I think I would need to ride it with, thankfully we were able to ride it several times. I think I'd probably need to go back and ride it again, just because on a media day you're so, you know, you have that, um, you know, you're trying to get pictures, you're trying to think of your review, you're trying to take notes and there's a lot going on. So I think I would be, um, I think it would benefit me a lot to go back to Hershey park and ride it again to really, to fully kind of take in everything. Um, but again, it was, and I, I think I'm kind of in the same boat as Kyle as I didn't follow it too closely. I did to an extent, but I just, I don't think my expectations were set that high either. And that really led to me being so impressed by the coaster. Is it perfection? Um, I don't, I don't know, but then I also can't, I don't have any main, I don't have any significant criticisms of it. There's this one kind of odd transition um, going from uh, leaving one of the wave turns into an airtime hill where it kind of does this awkward turn to the veers to the left a little bit, which was a little, uh, it kind of took me out of it. But aside from that, there's really, I don't have any criticisms of of the coaster. I love the pre the pre-lift segment where it drops. I was not expecting that at all. Very fun. Probably the funnest pre-lift section of a, of an RMC hybrid I've ever been on. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I would say it's as uh, that close to coaster perfection, but again, I really don't have any major, you know, improvements that I could recommend or ways that it could have been much better. So it, it's a stellar ride. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the trains and I know uh, Kyle, John, you and Evan, the three of you guys put together a really, really good uh, review and reaction on coaster101.com. So we'll link that in the show notes, but be sure to go check that out. What do you guys think of these trains? I mean, they were debuted at IAPA last year. Um, Could be some of the craziest detail work I've ever seen on a uh, coaster lead car. But um, how are the how are the trains? I mean, presumably they're the uh, going to leave me personally guessing if I can fit on them restraints. But um, what do you think of the trains? I'll go first. Um, the they're kind of like unlike anything I've seen before. There's like half of a life size cat coming out of the front of them, and like you said, it's just really highly detailed and really cool. They're all different um, colors: black and charcoal and gray. And, uh, just the, the detail on them is incredible. The, the sides of the trains are all done as done up as well. The only complaint I have is the, I think probably as you read in our article, the, if you're sitting in the front seat, you don't have a great view. The, the wall in front of you that's holding the cat to the train is just under eye level. So you can't really see the track in front of you. It's still, it's still good. It's a front seat ride, but it's not like um, on other trains. Okay, John, what about you? Kind of the same same deal. I'm reading as I'm talking to you guys. I'm kind of scrolling through and reading the reviews, and it seems like um, this could be a a middle row ride or a back row ride rather than waiting for the front seat. Yeah, I would I would agree with Kyle's thoughts. I think it is the trains are immaculate i mean the detail the attention to detail is unlike anything i've seen on another rmc train at least off the top of my head and it but it it does just given the size of it it does somewhat limit your view of the front uh of the track so if you're looking for that kind of unobstructed view of the track that you often look for in a front row ride 
you're really not going to get that. And so I actually prefer the middle and back sections of the train. So um, wouldn't necessarily turn down a front row ride, but it's not something that I'm going to wait a, any significant length of time. I'd rather ride it twice, two or three times in the middle or the back, as opposed to waiting a, longer just for one front row ride. Got it. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Hershey Park in the last, you know, three years or so. Obviously in 2020, they built Candemonium. Last year, I believe it was last year, they put some uh, TLC into uh, their Boomerang Coaster, kind of gave it a uh, Jolly Rancher Club remix or whatever we're going to call this with scents and smells and all, all kinds of good stuff. And then through a... Uh, a Zamperla Nebulas at the in the uh, Corbel Roll, you know what do you what do you think about Hershey Parks? Like, I don't want to say Renaissance really because that's I don't feel is a fair word. But in the last couple of years, they've obviously put a lot of focus into their new roller coasters. Um, you know, before that, the last new coaster was back in 2015, which was Laugh Track at all indoor spinning wild mouse. If it spins, I think so. I haven't been to Hershey Park. I need to go. <laughs> This is this is terrible that I'm admitting this on this show, <laughs> but you know what do you what do you think about um, Hershey Park's last couple of years as it relates to both um, capital investments with the new roller coasters as well as improvements on their pre existing coasters? Kyle, if you want to lead that one off, yeah, it's absolutely crazy to see how much they've put into that park in the last few years just the whole new front front entrance they'll like you mentioned all the new coasters they put in uh they do such a good job job maintaining all of their rides that like there's not a bad coaster there we got on most of them last week and you wouldn't be able to tell the ones that are uh you know 30 years old from the ones that were built two years ago so I think in the last couple of years, they've really rounded out their lineup in a good way. Now they have something for everyone, like the laugh track. It does spin a little bit, but not as much as a lot of other, they have another wild mouse in the park too. But um, yeah, there is something for everyone and wildcats revenge uh, in my opinion was, is now the best coaster there. And also it filled a huge gap that they had in a, you know, large, very smooth wooden coaster. Okay. John, what about you? What do you, what do you think of uh, Hershey parks, roller coaster Renaissance, not Renaissance? Yeah. I mean, I love this park. I have only been once prior to a uh, wildcats revenge media day uh, in 2017. And so sky rush laugh track had just opened uh, relatively recently, a couple of years prior and was just blown away. I mean, chocolate and roller coasters, what more could you ask for? And seeing the new entrance with Candemonium, which unfortunately I wasn't able to ride because it closed early due to maintenance issues and didn't reopen. So I'm a little distraught over that, but all the more reason to go back to the park and um, check that out. But it really is a park that I feel t completely comfortable recommend someone going to, if the, even if they don't like roller coasters. I, there's so much to do there. The coaster collection, I mean, it has to have one of the most well-rounded lineup, coaster lineups in the country. I mean, you've got uh, you've got Sky Rush, you've got um, Fahrenheit, which I think is very underestimated. Uh, Lightning Racer is fun. Um, <clears throat> Candemonium, I'm sure, is great. Storm Runner, Great Bear, Super Duper Looper. I mean, you, you just comment. You have all of these really really great rides that are kept up well and so it it's it's just a it's a great park and honestly i think if you included you know did some of the other attractions the hershey attractions you could probably spend two or three days there easily so it's uh yeah it's great and this only i think solidifies that status wildcats revenge solidifies that status I love it. And I and because I asked about Air Force One Media Day, um, how was how were the Media Day festivities at Hershey Park? Did they did they shower you with gift baskets of chocolate? <laughs> uh no, but they did shower us with rides on Wildcats Revenge. I wasn't sure how many how many times we were gonna be able to ride it and 
we pretty much got unlimited rides on it for an hour. Um, it was it was more so a, a coaster enthusiast media event. There weren't really traditional media, as far as I could tell. So there weren't live shots. So really, it was just us and the coaster. And yeah, we got the cool Wildcat um, Wildcats Revenge hat. It was uh, yeah, it was a really really fun event staff was so nice and welcoming and um and then we got free admission to the park for the rest of the day so it was uh it was it was great thoroughly love- enjoyed it and very grateful for the invite love it and before we wrap this up i mean i feel like i would be remiss if we weren't talking about kind of rmc's you know recent year obviously they've acquired or merged with or whatever the legal term is uh larson international So uh, according to them, Larson Loops are now coaster credits. I don't know if I buy that. Um, They're also doing some work down at uh, Mind Blower uh, at Fun Spot in Kissimmee. So, you know, what do you guys, what do you guys think is on the horizon? Just kind of putting on your, your armchair engineering, imagineering hats, you know, what do you, what do you think outside of the um, RMC that's allegedly announced for Wallaby Holland in 2025, according to RCDB, um, you know, what are some things that you think could be on the horizon for RMC? Just spitballing here. Yeah. I'm hoping that Airy Force One, like I said, will um, inspire other parks to build similar ground up um, iBox coasters actually haven't been on a single rail yet really excited to hopefully do that this summer at um at california's great america so of course would love to see them continue to work on those i mean i think it's this is obviously a company that continues to um, innovate and i hope we see more hybrid conversions as well Uh, but i i'm sure that they are working on things um that you know we don't know about yet that you know there's no telling what the what they have planned for for the next 10 years but i'm definitely excited and we'll be watching closely absolutely and you know with new leadership in the chair again with these business acquisitions um putting that 208 retrack on uh mind blower i think there's there's a lot going on kyle what about you what do you what do you hope to see um next from rmc in the next year three years five years ten years whatever your multi-year plan for rmc is (laughs) um if only i was in charge right um i I second what john says about the ibox track i think there's so much potential there the some of the best coasters i've been on are those they they're just they lend so much to the smoothness of the ride and transitions and you you looking at those uh, layouts of those rides you you would not think it would be something so like pleasantly enjoyable just it looks like it would throw you around and it doesn't i just think there's so much potential there and with their new builds recently there you can just tell they're pushing the envelope changing different things from their early rides to like wildcats revenge just like the airtime hills are so good you have airtime the the all the way through it there's just the length of it the the flips they're doing now it's just they're they're really pushing themselves and it's just going to be really cool to see what they do next i love it anything else you guys want to add before we uh put this podcast to bed make a trip to fun spot america in atlanta and hershey park and ride these two amazing rmcs as soon as you can there we go. The the checks in the mail from the Fun Spot Marketing Department and the Hershey Hershey Park <laughs> Mail Department Marketing Department. So we're we're good there. Hang on. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Coaster One Hundred and One Podcast. Kyle, John, thank you guys for joining me. Um, you know, maybe one day we'll get Evan on the podcast. We'll, we'll see how he, you know, we can, we can talk offline about how he was in person. We don't know. Right. (laughs) Um, but, um, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but be sure to head to coaster101.com, uh, to check out stories about, 
uh, Air Force One, Wildcats Revenge, Dark Coaster, all these new rides of 2023. We've ridden most of them by this point. Uh, we've reviewed them. We've given our thoughts. So be sure to go check that out. We are also on all forms of social media at Coaster 101. That's C O A S T E R 101. Um, if you don't know that by now, um, it's probably on some form of screen that you're listening to this podcast too. So uh, anywhere you can find social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you can find us. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcast. And if those places, specifically Apple podcast and Spotify, allow you to give reviews or ratings or anything of that sort, we obviously love written reviews. We love five-star ratings. Please keep those coming in. Uh, we really appreciate it. It helps people find us. And as we kind of reinvent this show and re uh, bring it back into the public eye after a couple of weeks off, obviously we need all the help we can get finding that audience. As always, a huge thank you to JM Music Design for our theme music. And we will talk to you all again soon. See ya. Thank you.